Welcome back to another spooky video. Dude, I've been loving to film these videos for October. For today's video, I am going to be going over not one, but three cases from La Mano Peluda. So La Mano Peluda was a radio show that was super popular in the 90s. It was a really popular paranormal radio show. The host, Juan Ramon Sainz, would have his viewers call in and talk about their paranormal experiences. And some of these stories, no mames, dude, estaban bien fuertes. I remember my dad would put the radio like tipo el estereo, you know? You know how Mexican dads, they would always have like el estereo bien perrón, bien acá. Well, my dad, I remember he would put the radio all the way up. And it was late at night and I was just hearing La Mano Peluda in my car seat in the back of the car. I remember being so scared. And of course, while I talk to you about these cases from La Mano Peluda, I'm going to be doing my makeup. So if you're going to get ready, let's get ready together. If you're going to cook, clean, chill, whatever you're going to do, get ready to hear about these three cases because these are three cases I could never forget. The first case I'm going to be covering is called El Caso de Nayeli Ortiz. So apparently they got a phone call on the radio show of La Mano Peluda. It was a girl que se, llama, se llamaba Lorena. Y cuenta Lorena que ella jugaba con la Ouija. But you know why she decided to play the Ouija board? It was because she had a boyfriend and she really wanted to know if he was cheating on her. Bruh, that's a whole other level of toxica. Going out of your way and risking your soul. Risking getting possessed. Just to find out. No más para saber si un güey te está poniendo el cuerno. But anyway, Lorena was playing the Ouija board. And she asked the Ouija board if her boyfriend at the time was cheating on her. And the board said yes. That he was. Ese chavo andaba con alguien y me dijo que sí. Y yo le pregunté que si la muchacha tenía teléfono y me dijo la hueja que sí. So then Lorena was like, okay, well, I want names. Who is he cheating on me with? Y le respondió la hueja. Y dijo que se llamaba Nayeli Ortiz. Así que se quedó como, okay, spill the tea. And then she asks the board if she can have Nayeli's phone number. And the board gives her the number. So she writes it down, she calls, and contesta un señor. Y le dice al señor, Hola, ¿me puedo comunicar con Nayeli Ortiz? Y el señor se queda como sacado de onda. He's like, who's calling? Y Lorena le dice, oh, una amiga. Y le dice, that's impossible. Because si sí vive aquí una Nayeli Ortiz, pero no más tiene dos años. Y dice, sí, dice, sí vive aquí una Nayeli Ortiz. Dice, pero lo que pasa es que es una niña de dos años. Dice, y es imposible que ella tenga amigas. Like, what the fuck? There is no way her boyfriend was cheating with a two-year-old. Así que otra vez empieza a jugar con la Ouija. And she tells the board, why did you tell me that he was cheating on me with Nayeli Ortiz if she's only two years old. And she says that the board tells her that she mentioned that little girl porque se le iba a llevar. Eh, me, la Ouija me dijo, dice, no, dice, lo que pasa es que esa niña se va a morir. Y yo le dije, pero ¿por qué? Y me dijo que ella se le iba a llevar. How fucking scary is that, dude? So then the girl gets invested, she's like, what the fuck? She waits a few days, calls the number again, 
And she's like, hola, me puedo comunicar con Nayeli Ortiz. Contestó otra vez el mismo señor y dice que se escuchó súper molesto. That he was like, seriously, you guys are playing around with that? You know, she recently died like two days ago. Después me dice, dice, no, dice, ¿cómo, cómo se ponen a jugar con eso? Dice, si mi hija acaba de fallecer. No, dude, I couldn't believe this story. I'm like, I really hope que la ouija no se llevó a la niña. O oh, no sé, güey, quién sabe qué pasó. But she was only two years old. Dice también que después... She tried to look for the paper where she wrote down the number. Pero que the paper went missing. And that it's like if that never even happened. So, dude, either she was on a good one or this actually happened. We will never know. Pero también cuenta que una vez le preguntó a la Ouija. So, dude, basically, Lorena had a Ouija to be a chismosa. She said que le preguntó a la Ouija... Que sí, y por favor, no agarren ideas de esto, ¿ok? A todas las tóxicas que me están viendo, por favor, no. Like, don't mess with this. But she says que hasta le preguntó a la Ouija una vez if her dad was cheating on her mom. Y la Ouija le dijo que sí. Y le preguntó que con quién. And the board spelled out Clara. Y pues a huevo le dijo a su papá. Le dijo, ya sé que te estás viendo con una mujer que se llama Clara. The dad knew that she would play with the Ouija. So, luego, luego el papá le dijo, ya te dije que ya no estés jugando con esas cosas. Y dice que ya después de eso, her and her mom found out que de hecho sí. Le estaba poniendo el cuerno a su mamá con una tal Clara. The dad even got mad and broke the Ouija board. So, this story is fucking crazy. Y también dice that when she would clean her room, since she would keep the Ouija board under the bed, que a veces salía la caja sola. Como queriendo que ella juegue con la caja. Barríamos y salía la Ouija, era lo primero que salía. O sea, como si la Ouija quisiera que yo la agarrara. The whole Nayeli Ortiz thing. It just trips me out so bad. I really hope that that wasn't the case. Y que la Ouija no se la llevó. Porque, güey, nomás tenía dos añitos. And I have such a soft spot for kids. Like, seriously, I love kids so much. <sighs> oh my God, why am I getting sad for her? Anyone that knows me in person, they know how much I love kids. I'm going to start doing my eyeshadow. And I do have this... PR from Makeup Revolution that they sent me. Dude, it's so cute. Every time that they send me PRs, it always feels like if I'm dreaming. Oh my God, that's so cute. Dude, I'm keeping this box. It's adorable. I'm gonna be using this palette. It's called Truly Sinful. This next case that I'm going to be covering is called El Caso de Juan. Oh my god, this has like blood. Well, not literally blood, but like a red liquid. It's so cool. Oh my god, I'm so amazed. This is so cute. Y bueno, este caso es sobre un señor que se llama Juan. He says that this happened around June. Juan was leaving his house. He was literally driving around the block and then he sees his really close friend. So he says hi like they always do. Y le dice, oh, ¿para dónde vas? The friend is like, oh, I'm going to go pick up my son from school. Y Juan le dice, do you want to ride? Because I can take you. Y digo, ¿qué es aquí? Dice, voy a la escuela por mi hijo. En las calles adelante estaba la escuela donde iba su hijo. And his friend is like, yeah, sure. So he hops in his truck and Juan, being a good friend, gives him a ride to school. Y ya lo deja ahí enfrente de la escuela. Su amigo le dice, write down my number. Remember, aquí estamos, you know, a la orden for whatever you need. You know, like how friends are. He writes down his friend's number en un papelito, lo pone en la guantera del carro. Se despiden y ya. 
Después de eso, a few days go by. Juan meets up with some friends and they look bummed out. So they end up telling Juan that their friend passed away. Y Juan se queda como sacado de onda because he's like, dude, I had just seen him a few days ago. Y dicen sus amigos that the family didn't want to say anything, that he actually passed away in January, but they didn't say anything for privacy reasons. Y pues, you get it. Juan was still really confused by this. He was like, what the fuck? I literally just saw him. In fact, I recently got my truck. He says that he got his truck around May and his friend passed away on January. De hecho, he went to his truck y en la guantera todavía estaba el papelito con el número. So he calls the number. His wife answers the phone y él le pregunta a la esposa if the news are true that his friend passed away. The wife says that unfortunately it is true. Y Juan le cuenta que él lo acaba de ver hace unos días. He even explains to her what he was wearing. He was like, he was wearing a red jacket with this type of shirt that had like a brand of cigarettes. Little details like that he was explaining to her. And the wife was like, yeah, I actually believe you 100% because he died in a car accident and he was wearing that red jacket. After that, the wife was just telling him how much his friend loved him, but he just couldn't believe that he saw and had a full ass conversation with his friend that was dead. <laughs> Nos llevamos muy pesado, nunca fue así, fue muy diferente. Y muy raro, muy serio a la vez. And now that he looks back, he's like thinking about it, he was acting a little weird. Dice que la neta sí se sacó de onda porque he lives nowhere near the school. So what was the friend doing there? I think he wanted to say goodbye. And another weird thing is that when Juan saw his friend, he says that the friend was walking back and forth, pacing back and forth, which is super random. Like, who does that? Hoy que también le, le dijo que le echara muchas ganas a la vida, a su trabajo, and things like that. So, I'm like, damn. You know, something similar to this happened to my dad. Oh my God, dude, if you know, you know. Except it was on a phone call. My dad talks about this in one of the videos that we have. I know that my eyeshadow looks pretty patchy because I need to blend it. I think I need to add some brown to blend it a bit. You guys are probably desesperadas wanting to blend my eyeshadow for me. I'm going to contour my face with this brown shade from here. Okay, but why does that look so good? Like, that actually looks really good. Now, this last case that I'm going to be covering is un caso sobre una escuela. In este caso, this guy calls the radio show. He works at a school and he's telling Juan Ramon que están haciendo como un tipo construcción en la escuela and they're making holes so they have all sorts of machines digging the ground and he says that these holes are very very deep and as they were digging they came across something hard así como una puerta estamos con la sorpresa de que era la parte de un sótano de la época cuando esto me, me los comentaban que era un como se llama como un convento he says that they opened it 
Y que había ropa. Ropa como de monjas o de monjes. Pero que no estaba en tan mala condición. Dice que también habían cremas. Little statues of religious figures. And he says that as soon as they opened it, a really nasty smell came out. Como a muerto. I need this blush. <laughs> oh my God, and this lip tint too. What else should I take from here? And then he shares that he found out that that school, before it was a school, era un convento para monjas. So it makes sense why that was found there. But still, why was it buried? And this is when things start to get real creepy. The guy shares that these past few days, they've heard voices coming from the holes. Se oye que hay una conversación entre dos personas, cosas que no se entienden, se distorsionan por... Pues no, no localizamos el lugar donde, donde se oyen las pláticas. Mm -hmm. Dice que se escucha como una conversación de dos personas. But they can't understand what they're saying. Nomás se escucha que hablan y hablan. Which is pretty interesting because the holes are underground. And you know what they say about being underground. ¿Quién está abajo? El diablo. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, no. I'm scared now. I was a little concerned about this blush because it's black. But dude, it's a color changing blush. That's so cute. So yeah, the guy thought that was pretty weird. También cuenta que hay un pasillo donde siempre se aparece una persona que parece que tiene una cobija. Y esta persona nomás la miran de lejos. Y dice que lo saluda, que alza una mano. Y después se desaparece. Y esta persona, cuando la hemos llegado a ver, eh, se queda parada en las escaleras y levanta la mano como haciéndonos un saludo. Pero no, no, no está vestida como cualquier persona, sino que ella viene como envuelta en una cobija. That's pretty creepy. Oh, it smells good. He also shares that in that school, hay una maestra que ella está más mayor. In fact, she is 85 years old. Y dice que esa maestra se la lleva plática y plática con una persona, pero que no se ve la persona. Que se escucha que siempre está chismeando con una persona. Que le platica about the library, about the classrooms. Pero que hace cuenta, she's talking to an invisible person. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit like this and feel in your face. No, no, no. Okay, this lip tint is honestly so pretty, dude. 10 out of 10. Now, I don't know if I should leave my mascara white because I'm used to the black. Sorry, guys. I'm too basic. I need the black. Lip tints do dry my lips a little bit. So, I'm going to be adding some lip gloss. I'm going to use this clear shade from Peri Para. I don't want to paint it. I don't want to paint it. But I think it's going to pintarse. Mm. And yeah, guys. These are three cases from La Mano Peluda. Honestly, I always like talking about La Mano Peluda. Because it's just so iconic and scary. That's one thing for sure. It's fucking scary. As always, comment down below what you think. I will be reading your comments. Also, this is the final makeup look. What do we think? I never really do my makeup like this. So this is something different for sure. Remember, if you haven't gotten your hands on my lashes, the lashes I'm wearing, they are from my brand. These are in the style Toxic. 
Dude, if you haven't gotten your hands on my lashes, go get them. The info will be down below. I feel like this style is perfect for spooky season. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can get notified for the next time I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!